All right, what's going on today, guys? Uh, it's your boy, Rome. Today, we're going to take a look at something that I did on yesterday, and we're going to try and uh, expand a little bit on it. So if you remember on yesterday, um, one of the things that I was showing in um, Photoshop's new filters is that you can take black and white images and then turn them or colorize them using a specific filter. So I started thinking about that after looking at the image a little bit closer. Um, just to see, you know, for experimental purposes, how far we could actually push this. So as you see here, this is a relatively, you know, high resolution image. Um, let's see. Uh, it's 68 megabytes opened in Photoshop. So, I mean, it'll get the job done. Let me get this thing out of here. Okay. So let's start off with um, what we did yesterday. So we're going to go to our filters, neutral filter, and we're going to go to colorize and let Photoshop do its magic. And there we go. So now we have a, I would say, you know, relatively nice skin tone for what it is. Now, of course, you can go in here, um, as I described before, and you can adjust the saturation. Um, so if you want to bring that up some, Make it warmer. I want to bring it up a little bit, but not too much, just so it has a normal, natural skin tone. So we're going to go ahead and open that. Okay. So here's our image. And if we look at it from our layer stack, if we disable the, the background layer, you can see where it masks. And if we disable this layer, the top layer, you see the color that's been applied. So as I zoom in here a little bit, I do see a little bit of color flaringing, but not enough that's significant because many times you'll be working on images that'll have this same type of color profile and you'll just have to make do with what you have. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and flatten this image and we're going to assume this is what I started with, right? So everything looks pretty good here. There goes my phone again, but you know, keep moving. Now there are some soft areas. It seems to have very little texture, but we'll work through all of that. And you can see that in here. Now, I don't know if that was something from the original image. Actually, let's go back and look at our history. Now, let's see. Yes, so that was from the original image. So that wasn't something that was done in Photoshop. So you see the lips are slightly out of focus, more focus here on the eyes than um, the majority of the rest of the body, I mean the face. So we'll make do with it. Okay, so let's get to it. So the questions that I usually get is, you know, which of the panels will give you the best result um, and also speed up your workflow. So if you guys know, I have a number of different panels that I've worked with, you know, from the um, MVP panels, you know, um, this Pro Workflow X, I've used it, Beautify I've used, the Retouch panel I've used, um, just a number of different others, you know, that work. And then recently, you know, the one that I've really been, um, you know, focusing in on is this um, Affinity Retouch panel. But today, we're going to focus on something that I think will be more user-friendly uh, for most guys starting out, and girls, you know, whoever you may be, you know, starting out on retouching. And that's going to be this Retouch panel. Now, the reason why I picked this one is because even if you don't have a strong background in Photoshop or any of those type of things, you kind of know what you like and you know how you want an image to look, right? So if we go here and we look at our, our uh, layers, we're going to go ahead, like we said before, we're going to flatten this and we're just going to work from this background layer, but we're going to duplicate it. So that's going to be Command J on a Mac. I think it's Control J on the PC. So here we are with our second layer and we're going to start off let's say softening the skin this is you know the things that most people would do 
So right here it has an easy mode. You also have frequency separation. You have texture, you know, for like, you know, where we're talking about down here. If you want to try and uh, replace some of that texture, we'll get to that. So let's start off with just our easy mode. And we'll see what it generates. Now this takes a minute to um, generate these uh, layers. And I, I'll tell you something, you know, that, that struck my... Uh, curiosity the other day so this is the layer that it created so you know it's a black um, mask here you would paint with your brush with white but I want to show you guys something really quick and then we're going to get back to the retouch panel so I'm going to delete this layer and now we just have our um, duplicate layer here right I want you guys to see something so this is the new panel from Infinity Retouch. So I'm going to create the stack from this um, image. I want you to see how fast this loads. And I'm even going to add the helper layer. There it is. And then I'm just going to go ahead and create the stack. Did you see that? Did you see how fast that loaded? Let's do that again. So we're going to remove all of these and we're going to do it again just to create boom everything you know all of your layers are there your helper layers there you can turn that on um, you can go in here if you know if you want to you know use your luminosity or whatever it is or you know your levels whatever you choose you know as your help helper layer you know to you know help you uh, identify what it is that you're working on so that's that layer right so here's your healing layer, you have dodge and burn, you have your color layers, you know, all those things are there. But what, what is just still amazing me a little bit is just how fast um, the algorithm is able to create those folders and get everything started. Okay, so anyway, back to what I was saying before. Let's go back to um, the retouch panel. And let's move it out of the way. We'll just, let's dock it for now. Okay, so it'll just be there. So here are our layers. So we're going to go ahead and hit the easy mode again. See how long it takes for it to apply that surface blur. Because that's basically the process that it's using. It's just blurring the surface. Um, it takes a few moments. Okay, so here we go. So now we're going to zoom in. And I wouldn't go, you know, crazy with this. You know, take it, you know, slow. So if you, you choose your brush... You want a soft brush. That's important that you're using a round soft brush if you're not using a tablet. And I usually put my um, my flow at about 10% and opacity at a, at 100. Now, that may vary. Some people do it in reverse where they'll do 10% on uh, opacity and then 100% on flow. So if you want to try that, you know, we'll just do that just for fun. Okay, so we're going to bring this down to 10 uh, let's bring it a little further down. Let's say seven or eight, somewhere in there. Let's just make it seven. Okay. And then we're going to make our flow 100%. Okay. So now with that done, we're going to, on the black layer, make sure this is in white, soft brush, and then we're just going to start painting in, right? So we're just going to start painting in over the skin. You're not going to see a lot of effect here because we have this so low. So now if we bring this back up, you know, say to 100%, now you really start to see um, the effect, you know, the blurring effect, taking effect over the skin. And I mean, that works to some degree, and then you can always roll this back. You know, we have some areas here that could be an issue, you know, where there's overlay of, you know, hair and stuff like that. But anyway, we're going to just go ahead and knock this out real quick. We don't want this to be really long. So I'm still going to soften that area under the eye here. And as you see, I'm kind of blending also into the hair, but I don't think that's going to be a big deal for, you know, this type of image. So we're just going to go ahead and roll with it. And... Hit all these areas. Any place there may be some 
Now we're just, like I said, we're just doing this as an experiment. Um, so it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to spend a lot of time um, working on this. But we want to try and get it as close as possible. So I'm just going to go in here and soften this up just a little bit. Usually I don't get in this close when I'm doing uh, this type of work. You know, I always keep it pretty much at um, the distance that you would be looking at the image if it was online or uh, in print or something like that. But yet and still, you know, you can still um, apply as much as you like. Now down here, I wouldn't focus on so much. I don't think that's going to be that big of a deal. Now I did notice down here where it did apply color here, it did not apply color here. So, you know, your options would be to clone that area or, you know, do are you the, you know, you can clone from this color here into this area or just mask the area out itself, you know. So you could do something, let's just try something really simple and see if it'll work. So let's get a large brush. Let's get a large brush and just paint this in real quick. Uh, wait, that's going to be on a layer. We don't want that. So we're going to go back to this layer and see if it'll work. Boom, there we go. Okay, so now we're back on this layer. And let's zoom out. And I want to zoom in just a little bit so you guys can see the difference of what has happened here. So go back to your layer. And if you turn that on, I mean off, then back on. You see what it did to the skin. Now, as you notice, I avoided the eyes on purpose. All of the areas that should be in detail, I, I avoided them on purpose, uh, including the lips. Even though the lips are still somewhat out of focus, and I think that just had to do with, um, you know, the way this was captured. But let's, let's keep rolling. So here we are. So we've done that part. I don't know if we should flatten this. Nah, let's just leave it as it is. Okay. So we do want to try and apply a little bit of texture down here over the lip. So let's zoom in just a bit so we can see that a little bit better. You could really apply texture over the entire face if you wanted to, just so everything stays consistent. So let's try that with this texture. Okay, so now here's your layer. Again, on white, soft brush. And we're going to just start painting just to see what it's going to look like. So as you see here, it's very, very, you know, coarse, almost like sandpaper, uh, if you're looking at it. So we're just going to just paint it in because we're going to, you know, lower the opacity of this um, significantly. But what we're trying to achieve here is the illusion of um, normal skin texture even after um, you know the smoothing was done. So we can go in here and just hit a couple of spots over the lip, chin area, his cheek under the eye. Okay, so obviously that's way too much, right? So we're just gonna go here and lower the opacity, bring that down to almost a normal texture and zoom in a little bit. That's still a bit much, so I'm going to bring that down to maybe in the 30s. Okay, because now we wouldn't be this zoomed in, obviously. So let's zoom back out. All right, so that's giving us somewhat of a normal skin texture just starting out. Now, like I said, a lot of this is experimental, you know, so you can play with this just to see what you're getting. But I'm just still amazed, you know, how fast um, this can speed up your workflow by just having these panels where you can just, you know, go from one thing to the next instead of having to go in and create, you know, all of these multiple layers and things like that to get the same job done. So we're just going to keep moving forward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put these two, um, the easy and the skin texture in one uh, folder. So I'm just going to group them. So I'm going to shift and click on both and then command G to create a group. And we'll just leave it as group one. You know, it's no big deal. Okay, so what have we done so far? We've done the easy skin um, softening. We skipped over the frequency separation, but we did add some texture, right? So the next thing you have here is like skin tone. 
dodge and burn um, you know you have like a skin glow you have a number of different you know effects here that you could use you know for a portrait now some of these I would use eh, some not so much you know so I mean there's so many different ways to get to the same thing but if you're going to do let's say dodge and burn as an I really need to turn my phone off but you know we clicked on the dodge and burn and go back to our layers so if you notice here it's a white um, layer this time right so down here is your dodge and burn so the option that you have is that you can paint with black on these you know and just you know switch back and forth or you can um, just paint with white and then just jump between your dodge and your burn right so it just depends on how you want to do it so usually this is how I have it set up where it's more like this you know versus uh, having this uh, white layer here so if I'm looking at the dodge and I'm going to come in here and let's lower this to, I don't know, let's say nine. And then we're just going to dodge this area just a little bit. You know, the nose, the chin, maybe right here on the forehead just a little bit. And then I'm going to jump over here to burn. And then I'm going to burn this area just where it's dark. It's going to add just a little bit of depth to the image along the side of the nose, bridge of the nose here, just to give it some dimension. All right. So let's close that for now so you guys can see a little bit better. Okay. So boom, there we go. So now that's just a really quick application. I mean, you can go as far with your dodging and burning as you want to. You know, I mean, you can micro dodge and burn. You can really, really get in there and mess around with it. But it just depends on, you know, what you're trying to produce and how soon you're trying to get it out. Right. So there's your dodge and burn. We turn it off and on. So you look at the cheek and the nose area here on off. You know, that works. OK, so let's go back to our panel, see what else we can use from here. I mean, there's a ton of things that you can use in here, but you pick these based on your workflow so that you're not just using every specific, you know, you know, panel. You know, it's like, you know, there's one for red removal. You know, there's one for grain. There's one for contrast. So, I mean, all of those things are there if you want to use them. Now, the next thing that normally you would do, um, you know, for most clients is, you know, you're going to whiten the eyes some. So you have an iris eye whitener and a color you know here then you have um, one for pupils like for black pupils uh, vein removal you know you have all of that so usually the way I do it if I was going to apply this I would do this on a separate layer and I would go in and remove um, the veins or something from the eye but we're just going to use the panel so I'm just going to click on the eye whitener and here's our you know black filter layer and we're going to just zoom in and we're going to change our brush size. We're still at 9% opacity. Now, this is not going to be perfect because remember, this was converted from a black and white, but we're going to try and get it as close as possible. We're just going to lighten the eyes up. That's all we're trying to do here, just to give an effect of what we can achieve um, using this panel. Um, and as you can see already, just with the little 9%. Now, if we take that up, say to 50 you really see a difference now so you start to see how it's cleaning up the eye and lightening up everything and you don't want to go too far because then the eyes start to look very neonish you know very unrealistic but just enough where they pop so if we zoom out and we turn that off and on now that's a little much but i'm going to bring it down just a touch just because I'm trying to stay within the theme of the image that we're working with here, right? So now what have we done so far? You know, we've softened the skin, we've added some texture, we've whitened the eyes, and you know, the, everything that we've done is just right from this panel, right? So next thing we would do is here, we could go in here and we could do something with the lips. So we're gonna zoom in on the lips just a little bit. Now, like I said, the lips are slightly out of focus, but we're not gonna focus on that too much. What we're gonna do is uh, add something. So let's just add, you can also dodge and burn the lips. You know, that's pretty cool, whiten teeth. Um, you can do uh, lip glow, which is cool. But what I want to do is I want to add uh, lip color. And I really want to use a color 
that's already within her um, lips, you know, from what I'm seeing here, right? So let's just say we're going to go with this one and go back here. And we're just going to start painting in. And we're just going to paint in. Just to give it a little bit of color. And by doing this, you also give back a little bit of the um, sharpness and the shape of the lips. So you should take your time, guys. Take your time. So I'm going to bring this out just a little bit, just so we get a little bit more of the shape of the lips there. Now that's... I'm a busy person today, but that's way too much. So I'm going to bring that down. Let's find a happy medium. Maybe somewhere in there, because that's a little close. Let's zoom out a little bit. So I don't like what I did here, so I'm going to switch my brush. I'm going to paint that out. Let me zoom in. I'm going to paint that out real quick. So you guys get the idea, right? So... That's doable. I'm going to bring it down a little bit, the opacity down a little bit more because I want it to stay within the theme, you know, the softness of this image. Okay, so we've um, added the lipstick. Now we're going to try and uh, use this um, wet lip. And we're just going to go over just the top of the lips just to add just a little bit of shine. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so... Let's zoom all the way out. So here we are. I mean, that's where we've gotten so far. Now you can go in and you can do things with the hair. Um, there's a hair enhance. You got a dodge and burn for the hair. You can change the color. You have, um, you know, when you're dealing with your hair detail, so that's going to make it the hair sharper. You can do that. Then you can jump over here to face. Now this is more AI. So when you use these features, what you're doing here is a lot like what Liquify does, right? So if you want to increase the dimensions of the eyes or the height or the width, so let's say if you want to, we're just going to just use it as an exaggeration, but we're going to click on it a couple of times and see what it does. So you see here, each layer that it creates from this panel is showing you what it's doing to the eyes, right? It's just making them a little bit larger. So if we go down, let's say to the mouth, and we want the top lip, we want it to be larger. So we're just going to click on that. And it does a very slight adjustment, but it, you know, it makes the lips larger. So all of these are tools. Again, like I said before, guys, all of these are nothing but tools. I don't like that. I'm going to take those out. So these are things that you can experiment with, you can play with, and you can find, you know, what's going to work best for you. Uh, let's get, you know what we're going to do? Let's flatten this image. So I can give you a better example of what this panel does here. So here we are looking at the mouth, right? So we're going to go to the upper lip and we're going to try and make it larger. As you see there, so that's the upper lip. So then we go to the bottom lip. You know, everybody wants those pouty lips. Okay, that's cool. We'll work with that. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten that and just get it out of the way so it doesn't mess up with some of the other uh, things that the panel does. The, this form one is more like um, the feature in Liquify where it, where it identifies the face and you can go in and adjust the jawline, the forehead, the chin, and so on and so on. So if you, know, if you went with the chin as an example, I clicked on it twice, as you notice, it, it shrunk the, skin, the, the chin in, right? So that's before, after. Okay, so if we look at the forehead, <clears throat> I don't know how well this is going to work on this type of image, but we'll try it. So we click on the forehead, and it expanded the forehead. Well, let's say we wanted the forehead to be smaller. And we click it again, make it even smaller. 
So as you see, it, it draws everything in. So we don't want any of that, but it's there for you if you want to use it. So we're just going to get rid of all of those. All right. So what's left? So there's a number of other things, you know, in this panel, you know, where you can do um, clothing. You can you can change the color of clothing. You can do dodge and burn on, on clothing. That's a perfect for fashion, fashion photography. If you're doing... <clears throat> I've used things like this for even uh, product photography, you know, where you have to change the color of something or you want to dodge and burn. It could be a can. It could be a motorcycle. It could be whatever. So you're doing basically the same thing. You know, dodging and burning can be used for almost any type of image. It does not have to be exclusive to just photos. So the other things that it has under here is a couple of presets, you know, where it has like uh, different looks. You have some glamour looks. You have some cinema looks. You have... Um, different feels and you know things like that. So if you look at maybe um, one of the glamour, we're just gonna click on three and it's gonna run that. And you see what it did there. See how it warmed the skin? That's cute. And I mean, you could use that, you know, you could just bring that down some so it's not so much. You're just adding a little bit of warmth to the skin. Um, I'm gonna bring that up to maybe 25% just to warm the skin, just a touch, right? So then you have other things like you have these different overlays for water. You have um, snow, rain, sun, dust. So, you know, these would apply if you're doing some type of special effects to your images or something like that. I would use it for that. Um, but it is what it is. So here again, I'm going to flatten this image because I want to keep that warmth. So here again, you have your split tone and some other different color filters that you have in here. So you got warm cold ice, uh, warm shadows, warm highlights, cold shadows, cold highlights. But we're going to look at the split tone first, right? So if we click on, um, let's just do seven. Now, you see what that did? It gave it kind of, um, I would almost say like a fashion-y warm tone um, something that you may see on Instagram or in a magazine or something along that line. And then, you know, the other thing is that you could do is here, you could always, you know, reverse, uh, invert this filter and then paint in where you want it or just do what I'm doing here is just lowering the opacity. So that's before and that's after. And you, again, like I said, play with these, you know, just to see what works for your image, right? So, you know, you have again, these color filters that you could do here. So let's say we want, to, um, we want it to be a little bit cool in the shadows, but we want to try and maintain the warmth in the skin, right? So we just go with the cold shadows and you see how that cooled off everything. But the mask here, if you see here, it's um, identifying the face, the skin tone and things like that, right? So. We're going to bring that opacity down to just to cool off the shadows in the hair, stuff like that, right? Okay, so what's left with this panel? Now, down here at the bottom, really quick, you have all of your different uh, controls. You know, you have your brushes, you have your clone stamp, you have, um, you know, filters, you know, how you can invert. You have your, uh, say, for instance, if you wanted to see your histogram, you could click on that, but I don't want to do that. You know, you have uh, different layers that you can create. I don't want to create one, but, you know, it, they're there. And then um, you can also change your language, depending on what language um, you're, you know, using, you know, whatever country you're from, you can change your languages. So then to finish up everything, you have details and grain. So details is going to be, I think, more like sharpening, you know, for the image. So let's say if we run this detail, um, and then zoom in here and see what we're getting. And you can start to see, look around the eyes, how it's really bringing a little bit more detail into the image, possibly in the hair. Yeah, I see it there. Now, you got to remember what we started off with. You know, this was an image that was black and white that we converted and all that other cool stuff. Now, the other thing that you can do, if you want to add like some of the effect of film grain, you know, because you're trying to make it look like this was shot, you know, on, you know, with film, you know, you can go in here and do some artificial film. 
Um, you have blurs that you can use. You know, you have um, these little, I'm not really sure on these backgrounds. That's not something I would use. But again, you could experiment with it. And then you have your final contrast. So let's just run this so we can see what it does. So as you see there, what it does, it just basically adds a contrast curve. So then you can go back in here and again, lower that opacity to get where you want. And then the last thing that you have is to save. So you can do a save, save as, or save for the web. So if you're saving for the web, it's going to be something, you know, along the lines of um, Facebook, Instagram, you know, if you're going to post it there. Save as is just like in Photoshop, you know, where it would, you know, save a copy. So if we click on save as, it should give us the option. You see here it says copy. So it's, it's creating a copy of the image. So it should leave, you know, the original image uh, untouched. And then if you do save, well, obviously it's going to save to the image itself. All right, guys. So we've gone through the entire, for what it's worth, you know, uh, this retouch panel. I think it's a worthwhile investment. You know, for a lot of you guys, if you're starting out and you're saying, okay, you know, this is, I'm going to spend, you know, $50 or $49 or something like that just to get started. Right now, I know that they're running a special for like 99 cents. You can um, download this panel and use it. Uh, I don't know how long the length of time is that you get to, you know, to try it out. But, you know, for 99 cents, you know, it's worth it. Now, again, it depends on, you know, what it is that you're trying to create. If you are a portrait photographer, if you're doing a lot of glamour work or you're working with models or something like that and you want to develop your own look, hey, man, this might be perfect for you. So give it a shot. All right, guys, it's been your guy, Rome. It's a beautiful day in the city of Houston, and I'm going to get out and do some creative stuff. But until next time, guys, you know, stay safe, stay creative, and, you know, post some of the stuff that you're creating. You know, I'd love to see some of the things you're working on. All right, guys, I will catch you guys in the next video. If you have not subscribed, please do so. And I look forward to responding to your comments down below. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. I'm out.